So a few days ago I made a video around the recent leaks and rumors around Navi21, a high performing huge graphics chip that could be the rumored Radeon RX 5900 XT we all have been waiting for. Now in that video I said AMD could be showing it on CES in Las Vegas which unfortunately did not happen. Now during CES in Vegas AMD CEO Lisa Su got a question about high end Navi and finally AMD has has given us some very interesting answers. In this video we're going to look at high end Navi, what the rumors are saying and we obviously gonna look at what AMD have told us so far and spoilers, yes high end Navi is coming and this yeah obviously begs the question when can we possibly get our hands on it? Let's take a look at everything we know about the possible RX Radeon, god damn it, Radeon RX 5900 XT. So in the summer of 2019 AMD launched the Radeon RX 5700 graphics card series which also marked the introduction of the Navi generation and the architecture Radeon DNA or uh, RDNA in terms of performance the series top card Radeon RX 5700 XT placed itself in the upper part of the middle segment to compete with MBS GeForce RTX 2070 Super and so AMD had no replacement for the Radeon 7 and because of that they left them Video with no competition in the high end range and this is obviously bad for us gamers we obviously want competition because that would bring down the prices hopefully so that we can buy higher end graphics card for cheaper prices right now there has however been rumors around a high performing at navi gpu and and these rumors were suggesting that amd would unveil this graphics card during ces in las vegas on january 6th yes long story short ces 20 2020 went by and I was <laughs> very excited and while AMD unveiled the Radeon RX 5600 XT which places itself in the mid-range segment right between the RX 5700 and the RX 5500 they did talk about 1080p and 1440p gaming but nothing about gaming at 4k and so not a single word on high performing Navi which was very very disappointing to me. Here comes the positive news guys. Gordon Ung I hope I pronounced that right, at PC World among uh, many other journalists had the opportunity to sit down with the CEO at AMD, you know Lisa Su where they asked a bunch of questions when Gordon asked the following question, do you think AMD has to have a high-end competitor in the discrete graphics market? Whereas Lisa Su laughed and answered, I know those on Reddit want a high-end Navi, you should expect that we will have a high-end Navi and that it is important to have it the discrete graphics market especially at the high end is very important to us so you should expect that we will have a high end navi although i don't usually comment on unannounced products and so this definitely confirms the fact that a high end performing navi graphics card is possibly several graphics cards obviously are in the making previous reports indicate that the possible rx 5900 xt or whatever amd decides to name it will be based on the new and larger uh, Navi ship called Navi 20 or possibly the Navi 21 which will be manufactured on TSMC's redefined process 7 nanometer plus. So this high performing Navi is going to be based on a totally new ship this time and so it's not going to be Navi 10. The rumors are suggesting a Navi 20 or again the possible Navi 21. So what can we expect from this ship? How powerful will it be and can it actually compete with NVIDIA's top performing graphics card? Let's look at what we know so far. So about a week ago a high-end Navi GPU called Navi21 were spotted on a Taiwanese forum which then was picked up by someone on Reddit and if these rumors turn out to be real guys this GPU could actually be the graphics chip that Lisa Su is referring to. Now, we gotta need a disclaimer here. Now, as this information hasn't been confirmed by AMD you have to treat this with a scoop of salt. But according to this leaker on reddit, Navi21 features a 505 square millimeter die size and GDDR6 memory. Now in comparison, Navi10 has a die size of 251 square millimeter and so this new ship is twice as big. Navi10 if you don't know were used in the Radeon RX 
700 XT. WCCF Tech is reporting that this is even bigger than AMD's Vega 20 GPU, which had a die size of 331 square millimeters. So it could mean that we're looking at the powerhouse of a ship, which should definitely be faster than anything the AMD has released yet. Now the AMD Vega 20 featured 13.2 billion transistors, so the Navi 21 GPU could exceed 15 to even 60 million transistors, which would make this ship far more denser than anything else on the market right now. now. The details to the leak were posted at a Taiwanese forum, which listed down several key specifications of the upcoming high-end Navi GPU. Now we know that AMD's current Radeon RX lineup is based on the 7 nanometer process node, and it's part of the first generation RDNA family. The second generation is expected to take use of the advanced 7 nanometer plus process node, should give us an overall performance efficiency, and god not forbid hardware accelerated ray tracing, which is also a huge part of second generation RDNA. If we take a look at this chart here, this is coming from one of the AMD's presentations, showing the advantage in terms of power the Navi field GPUs have to the older Polaris and GCN architecture, aka the RX 570, the 580 and the 590 cards, etc. And as we can see, there is quite a significant increase in power and performance with the new Navi GPUs from AMD. Speaking of performance, what can we expect of Navi 21? So now because Navi 21 is said to be at least twice as fast as the Navi 10 GPU, the Radeon RX 5700 XT is the best case for the Navi 10 GPU. And this graphics card comes close to the GeForce RTX 2070 Super. Based on that information, Navi 21 could exceed the RTX 2080 Super performance and even come close to the RTX 2080 Ti. And this might explain why we are hearing rumors about an Nvidia RTX 2080 Ti Super. And so if Nvidia is planning on a super card of the RTX 2080 Ti, perhaps we don't have to wait that long for Navi 21. Now, I think it's important for AMD not waiting too long dropping the Navi 21, because as we know, Nvidia is already at hard work on their RTX 3000 series as well. Anyway, we know that clock speeds are important, but nothing is said from the leaker, and so unfortunately, it makes it quite hard to know how fast this GPU will be, and how hot it will run, of course. But yeah, we can assume that because of its uh, huge die size, it's going to be a power hungry beast. Navi 10 for example has a TDP of 225 watts and so assuming around 300 watts for this one wouldn't be completely unreasonable. Now stated on reddit, this card will be using a GDDR6 memory and not HBM this time. Now WCCF Tech is reporting that this would mean that we are likely to get 384 to 512 bit memory interface which should either give us a 12 gigabyte or a 16 gigabytes of memory. Again, WCCF Tech is reporting that AMD could also go one step ahead and offer 24 to even 32 gigabytes of GDDR6. 32 gigs of VRAM seems a bit extreme, but 12 to even 16 gigabytes would be pretty sweet. And considering the fact that next generation consoles are rumored to get around 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which are set to release later this year, picking up a graphics card with anything less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM might not be enough if you want to be able to max out your favorite game in 4k in a few years time. Now in terms of pricing as well as the release frame, we still don't have the answers. So Lisa Su has finally confirmed high-end Navi, but we still aren't sure whether they're gonna use the Navi 21 or the Navi 20 GPU. As always, I'm going to keep you guys informed on this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Having more competition in the graphics card high-end space will definitely fix some of the ludicrous prices of the RTX 2080 cards right now. Guys, <laughs> I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about Navi 21? Please let me know in the comments below.